Hello everyone, welcome to Chinatown Museum's first ever live stream. As part of our anniversary celebrations, we will be bringing a set of talks for all ages onto our Facebook page. These talks will be held every Saturday of the month at around 3 p.m. And feel free to let us know what you've learned from our series by posting something and hashtagging History Matters. So for today, um, Hello everyone, a, welcome to Chinatown Museum's first, first ever, ever anniversary live stream. Live stream. As part of our anniversary celebration, we will be bringing a set of shared talks for all ages onto Binondo's our Facebook cultural page. Diversity. These talks um, will be held every Saturday of the month um, at around 3 p.m. based as a diasporic haven of sorts. And I'm honored to welcome our first guest on our first ever live stream, Professor Xiao Chua. So Professor Xiao is an assistant professor professorial lecturer at the La Salle University, Manila. He is a segment host at Xiao Time at the People's Television Network. He is a, prof he is a historical consultant at Katipunan at Ilustrado for GMA7 and, and for History with Lord. Feel free. So without further ado, I hope we can welcome Sir Xiao or wherever he is. Makasaysayang uh, araw po sa ating lahat. Uh, thank you, Chinatown, Binondo Chinatown Museum for inviting me. Welcome, sir. So, yes. before we begin na lang siguro, we are going to show a few questions that um, people wanted to ask you. And hopefully, throughout your lecture, we will answer these questions as Sir Xiao discuss. So, some questions... Yes include what is the name, what is the origin of the name of Binondo? So I think mm -hmm. Sir kind of touched on this on the comment section now, but more on that later. Um, do they, I'm assuming these are um, the people living in Binondo, use a particular currency at that time, or did they trade mostly through barter exchange? Interesting question. Mm -hmm. And what made immigrants settle down in Binondo when there were other markets or, I guess, commercial hubs open at that time? So I think also very relevant question. And then, oh, sir, something more touchy naman. Um, were there racial tensions mm -hmm. towards the residents of Ooh. Binondo? Oh, yeah. It's like so, so timely. Yeah. <laughs> Very, very timely. And lastly, any notable or famous people who were born or have lived in Binanda? So, sir, take it away. Okay. Again, makasaysayang araw po. Uh, I'm Xiao Chua. Uh, please don't mistake me to another person who is uh, doing uh, feng shui. You know? Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's really uh, Xiao Chua. See si Hans Kuwayon. Okay, so welcome to a, a celebrating Binondo, uh, a shared uh, past. Now, um, before we start, uh, we always associate Binondo with a lot of things. No? Uh, if you're going to look at the first picture, you will see na yeah, we always look at Binondo as like you know, the Chinese entrance. Uh, so, wait a minute. Yeah, so the Chinese enclave. You will see there the the uh, um, Chinese New Year. You know, people will go to Binondo for that. And uh, if you're going to see the next picture, you will also see that uh, we always associate uh, Binondo with the first, of course, the Jones Bridge. We associate it with food, Chinese food especially, and we always associate it with Pakyawan. You no, know? now um, this talk. And I, I'm so honored to be the very first one for the Binondo Chinatown Museum. Uh, you will see the next slide. This this uh, uh, talk is sort of a patikim. Ano bang meron sa Chinatown Museum? Kasi maganda yan na you, you have Binondo as a whole experience, but you also have Chinatown as uh, parang as as going back to the past going back to the past and going back also to the significance of Chinatown and Binondo. So you will also see in the next picture, you will see a lot of uh, the, shall we say, the jewelry, yung mga iba't ibang mga nangyari sa Binondo, maritime trade, spices, ivory. You will see it in the displays of the museum. Okay, now, 
before we go to yeah you you see there the map already nakikita ninyo yan you will understand what happened to Binondo by looking at the location of Binondo nasan ba ang Binondo so you see there that there are uh, you, you see the names of the districts you have Manila Bay there Intramuros dito sa uh, uh, left side nyo, you have San Nicolas district and then you have uh, Pasig River and Puente de España or now we call Jones Bridge and then Escolta and then you see Binondo right there at the right side. Now, Manila Bay and Pasig River, this is what we call in Tagalog, uh, Alog. Okay, Alog is the river delta. And that's why we now know, according to Dr. Lars Ubaldo, that the term Binondo, I'm uh, sorry, the term Tagalog actually came from the word Alog, which is the river delta, kung saan nagkikita yung uh, rivers at saka yung sea. Um, I am sorry, I just have to put my earphones. I forgot to put them for a clearer audio. There. Okay. Now, um, that's why if you're going to look at the maritime culture of the Philippines before the coming of the Spaniards, you will see na itong alog is actually important because um, can you go back to the slide before that? Mm -hmm. You will see that uh, oh no, wala. Anyway, uh, there's a there's a shall we say a important itong alog because dito po pasok yung mga ibat ibang mga uh, produkto at mga traders even before the Spaniards came. Intramuros used to be the kingdom of Manila of Raja Sulaiman and. Uh, Nag, ang nangyayari dyan ay parang yung Maynila, which is near Binondo, the Binondo is on the other side, becomes what we call the uh, toll gate for um, many, many uh, traders to go inside the innermost part of uh, Luzon. So if you want to go to Manila, uh, to Laguna de Bay, the kingdoms there, you will have to pass by this area. So yan yung mundo ng Binondo. So even before the Spaniards came, bagsaka na yan ng produkto. That's why we believe that that is the reason why even today, Binondo is sort of bagsakan, no? pakiawan. Because that is how, Eve, uh, during the time of the, before the coming of the Spaniards, yan yung uh, nakikita natin. In the uh, Alfredo Roca collection, you will see that there are pictures of that uh, old maps, you have pictures of those uh, old ships, yung mga tinatawag na junk. Uh, uh, and uh, you will see also in the Chinatown Museum, next slide, drawings of uh, uh, artistic representations of how the Chinese were able to trade uh, not just with our ancestors, but also eventually with the Spaniards. We're going to talk about that later. Okay, so um, you see na the Filipinos, next slide, you will see the Filipinos are, you know, uh, collecting uh, the, the various, uh, shall we say, uh, products that they sell to the Chinese. And the Chinese, of course, exchanges them with silk, uh, porcelain, and all of that. So later we will talk about that. And also, nakikita natin dito, there's a, ditong Boxer Codex uh, drawings where you see how uh, in 1593, the Spaniards uh, showed kung ano yung mga itsuran ng mga tao nung unang panahon. So, for example, you will see there the Tagalog, Naturales Tagalos, which uh, have uh, yung mga tao na may mga ginto sa kanilang uh, nasuot-suot sa kanilang katawan. And then you have uh, ang mga itsura din ng mga Chinese na nakikipag-trade. So, you will see that if, um, makikita natin na to, to talk about Binondo, you have to look at uh, 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 further do sa history ng ugnayan ng mga katutubo dito sa bayang ito, sa mga isla dito sa Pilipinas, at yung mga Chino na isang imperyo na nakikipagkalakal sa kanya mga kapitbahay. So what were they trading? Uh, next uh, slide, you will see that uh, they're trading, the Chinese were trading silk, pottery, tame buffalo, hardware, farm implements, uh, uh, and uh, yung mga uh, people from these islands, you have swallow's nest, tortoise shells, sea cucumber, 
has shark fins, mother of pearl, beeswax, gold dust, and pearls. These are, of course, you will see na uh, th these are also uh, favorite din ng mga Chinese. Ito mga items na ito. And the Chinese uh, items also became a favorite when there were archaeological diggings that happened in, uh, in, in, in many parts of the country. You will see that in the old kingdoms, they always, you can always find Ming jars from the Chinese trade uh, in, the, in the different archaeological settings. You will see in the next slide yung uh, isang um, uh, painting of Manalad in the Bulacan capital you, where you will see our ancestors trading with the Chinese. And uh, yeah, you, you, may, you might ask, ano bang palitan nila noon? Was it really barter trade? Well, in a sense, yes. But it's not, uh, it's not, hindi naman siya talaga barter trade in the sense na walang sistema. Okay? Na may produkto ka lang and then papalitan lang kabud. Hindi, hindi siya ganun. Uh, you have to see na there, uh, at the time that the Spaniards um, at the time that the Spaniards already came uh, no, the, the Spaniards, before the Spaniards came here, itong ating mga uh, Pilipino were already, shall we say, anong tawag dito? Uh, they, they have a system wherein a certain products are equivalent to metal. No? So, magkakaroon sila ng mga produkto. No? So, for example, uh, the, uh, the Chinese would need rice, for example. Uh, they would need a certain number of uh, gold or silver na readily available na ibinibigay as currency. So, tanda natin na yung mga pera-pera din naman ng mga, ng mga tao nung unang panahon uh, sa ibang bansa, they're already in uh, what we call precious metals. So silver, they're using silver. Uh, ngayon, hindi na natin ginagawa yan. Mayroon tayong mga parang uh, substitutes. Na parang yung value na lang ng money yun. Yung nasa, naka-store sa vault yung talagang ginto natin. But at that time, we're really trading with gold, silver, and all of that. Um, yun, yung, ano, yun yung ginagawa natin. So meron na rin pera. So for example, uh, bartering's. Uh, ginagamit yan, o kaya mga alahas ng mga ninuno natin, yung gold of ancestors natin, yun yung ginagamit nila. If you will see in the, ne you will see in the next slide, you will see na our kingdoms were part of what we call the Southeast Asian trade route to China, and you will see in the next slide that in the Boxer Codex, our ancestors were actually depicted, depicted in 1593 wearing our gold, which is the gold of ancestors, and what I believe are silk items from the Chinese. So they're wearing silk as it appears here. And uh, in fact, this Boxer Codex that was pinagawayan ni Governor General uh, Gomez Perez Las Parinas in 1593 was actually made by a Chinese artist, uh, we believe. So next slide, you will see the Chinese. Again, you will see the um, appearance of a Chinese in 1593. And another slide shows that as well. Now. Uh, we go to the Binondo etymology. Ano ba? Saan ba nagaling yung salitang Binondo? Now, of course, you always read this, that Bino, uh, Binondo came from Binundok. But I, have, we, I, I already have a big problem when I read that because I, naghanap ako, bakit may, may bundok ba sa Binondo? Wala namang bundok doon. Di ba may ilog doon? Di ba may mga maliliit na mga uh, estero na, naging estero pagdating ng mga Espanyol. But wala namang bundok doon. So, paano siya naging binundok? Parang hill ba yun? Hindi eh, dapat hill yung tawag nila. No, burol. Hindi binundok. Binurol, siguro. So, wala, wala namang bundok doon. That's why Jean-Paul Jean Potet, a French linguist na expert po sa ating wika dito sa Pilipinas, he believes, and experts always believe na yung mga uh, iba't ibang mga uh, halaman o yung mga for formation sa lupa at sa tubig, yan yung mga usual names talaga o pinagbumulan na names ng mga uh, lugar. So, Tagalog, Tagaalog, diba? uh, Agusan, Agos, diba? and all of that. Dito naman, sa Tarlac, halimbawa, din na, I'm here in Tarlac today, no? maraming Chinoy dito. Sa Tarlac, uh, Tarlac is actually a grass. E sabi ni Putet, ito'y tinduk-tindukan. Galing daw sa tinduk-tindukan. O yung tinatawag natin tunduk. No? This is Aegiseras. Uh, Aegiseras cornicolatum. And uh, it's a mangrove that grows in the river. You will see there's an old illustration here. And in actual picture, you will also see it there. Ayan. 
Ah, uh, ito yung tindok tindukan o yung tinatawag natin tundok. Now, this is amazing. And it makes more sense now because if you're going to look at the ta the, the name of tondo, tondo actually also came from tundok. So it makes sense kasi you have tondo na katabi ng binondo na actually pareho lang sila ng pinagbulan ng pangalan. You have tundok, tondo, and tindok tindukan binondo. Oh? Binundok, tindok, tindukan. Binundo, binundo, tindok, tindukan. O, ayan. Ngayon, alam na natin ha, yung isa sa mga mas probable theory. Now, uh, ito yung kailangan nating maintindihan. Ano? Kasi si Chow Jukwa, no? Chow Jukwa, na siyang gumawa nung parang uh, uh, account no? of various barbarians sa tinatawag natin, yung Chu Fan Chi. Uh, at around about 900 sinulat nito 13th century pero about 900 AD daw may mga pumunta daw mga tao sa China na that they call themselves uh, coming from a place called Mai Mai -e. Now of course a lot of people said that it's probably in Mai Mindoro but more scholars now believe that it could have been Maynila Mai Nila no mas mas it makes more sense no na Actually, the people from Maip, uh, from from sorry, from Maii, were actually coming from Maynila, no? And uh, what was Maynila at that time? Maynila, if you're going to look at this uh, picture of the Laguna de Bai, no, uh, place uh, area, yung yung Pasig River will go to ano no, lumulusot yan sa Laguna de Bai. Uh, Maynila is with Tondo, no, and yung area na nga ng Binondo, Tondo at that time was a large kingdom. And it was uh, actually mentioned in the Laguna Copper Plate inscription na yung kingdom of Tondo, Paila or Pila Laguna, and Puliran Kasumuran, which is the mountainous uh, kingdoms at Nagkarlan, Liliu, and, and, and Mahayhay in Laguna, were actually uh, transacting with each other with people from Butuan, which is Dewata, and people people from Medang, which, are, which was Indonesia. 900 AD, they were already trading with each other. So, yan yung area ng Binondo. It was a rich kingdom in, uh, na, 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 in, in many ways, no? malapit doon sa tinatawag na, sorry, malapit yung Binondo doon sa rich kingdom na tinatawag na Tundo. And just to give uh, context to how we were already, you know, um, dealing with the Chinese at that time, We are using those waters. No? Uh, of course, mahirap pag-usapan dito yung uh, uh, our problems with the West Philippine Sea, but there's probably a confusion there because for the many, many years, for centuries, that was common uh, waters na dumadaan ang mga Chino at ang mga Indio, uh, sorry, ang mga Pinoy na uh, pumapa, pumupunta sa China at pumupunta sa Pilipinas. So, during the time of uh, uh, one of the emperors, uh, Um, a Chinese emperor, yung sultan na si Paduka Batara o Paduka Pahala ay bumisita sa uh, sa China uh, 1470. Oh, at uh, well, of course, alam na natin istorya doon na namatay siya doon tapos the emperor, Yenglo, was able to become generous with the sultan's family kasi namatay nga siya doon sa China habang binibisita siya. He was welcomed, ah. Sa sayang kasi, he was welcomed as a head of state. The Sultan of Sulu was recognized by China. No? Eh, ang nangyari, eh, namatay si Sultan doon. Kaya, doon siya nilibing. Yung anak niyang isa ay umuwi para maging Sultan. Yung pamilya niya at yung asawa niya ay nanatili sa China at tinuring na royal family at binigyan ng binigyan ng lupa doon. At hanggang ngayon, may descendants si Sultan of Sulu pa doon kabataran ng mga Chinese. So, ganun katindi yung pakikipag-ugnayan. Of course, that would change when the Spaniards came. And uh, dati kasi, the Chinese were just going here to trade. Uh, they're not, our historians believe they're not settling, set, di, ni sila nagsisettle dito, nagtitrade lang talaga sila. But eventually, of course, the Spaniards will institute what we call the galleon trade. And when the galleon trade happened, Uh, this was 200 years. This was the longest trade route ever in the history of the world. You will see in the map there that uh, half of the, almost half of the world ang, 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 ang naabot ng galleon trade. This was Manila, Acapulco, Acapulco, Sevilla, Spain. The longest trade route ever in the history of the world. This, doon nakakuha 
ang nakakita ang Chinese ng mga um, opportunities. So they settled and they went to the Philippines. They settled near the Spanish enclave. You know, we know the Spanish enclave. In the next picture, you see there's Intramuros. Uh, but in Intramuros, there's a place called uh, Puerta del Parian. Uh, in the next picture, you will see it. Puerta del Parian is actually a gate leading to the Parian. Parian is the market where uh, the Chinese were also located outside Intramuros. So this was the ancient, the, 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 the ethnic Chinese, pure-blooded ethnic Chinese were residing. And because naturally, the Chinese were traders, uh, uh, they were able to, uh, shall we say, they were able to um, trade and they were able to sell things. Nagbenta sila sa mga Kastila. Kaya yung Puerta del Parian, lalabas yung mga Kastila dun sa gate Okay, I think we are currently experiencing some technical difficulties. Okay, I think we are currently experiencing... Um, please hold on while we um, try to get our live going again. Um, yeah, we are working on it. We, we hear you. I'm back. Can you hear me? I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can yes, hear sir. you. I can hear you. Okay, you're yeah, back. Thank you you're so back. much. I'm back. I'm very sorry. Okay, now. Um, when according, did I stop? According to the comment spot, you stopped at around the Parian, Puerto del Parian discussion. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so yeah, let's... Uh, Basically, I'll just repeat that Parian was the area where the Chinese, ethnic Chinese, were settled by the Spaniards. So, tandaan nyo, ganito yung stilo dyan, ano? Uh, the Spaniards were always thinking of racial lines. Na kami, doon kami sa Intramuro, sa loob kami, kami yung mapuputi. No? Pero, to mga Chinese na ito, doon sila sa Parian, and they were asked, the ethnic Chinese were just asked to just stay there. O para silang ano doon, uh, parang ghetto, no? Parang they were just allowed. They, alam mo, remember during the time of the Spaniards, kaya ka nga may sedula. Kasi parang ganito, 'di ba? Nakaka-relate kayo sa quarantine, 'di kayo makalabas sa mga probinsya, no? Parang ganoon nung panahon ng Spaniards. You just can go from one province to another. You need papers, no? And for the ethnic Chinese, they're not allowed to roam around the country. No? They're only settled in one place. So that's the big problem. Kaya uh, kung titingnan mo, talagang there's a uh, there's a racial issue already there. No, na sila si na segregate tong mga ethnic Chinese. But again, they were useful to the Spaniards because nakakakuha ng murang murang produkto ang mga Kastila sa kanila. And why are the Chinese so successful? Why? Because remember na uh, kapag ka sila po ay kumuha ng mga produkto, they get it pakiyawan talaga. They get wholesale and then they can retail it for very very small uh, kita no yun yung ano profit nila counting konti lang per product 
but when but, but because sobrang mura nilang mag, magbigay ng produkto sobrang dami ng kinukuha sa kanila ng tao no then so yan ang secret talaga ng mga Chinese sa Pilipinas. Lagi sinasabi sa akin, tinuturo sa akin yan ng mga nanay ko, tatay ko, na ganun ang mga Chinese. Nagtutubo sila ng maliit that, that, dahil doon, marami bumibili sa kanila. So they were called Xianglis o Sangli. And you will see that in the Boxer Codex sa Sangli. Now, uh, for the longest time, Sangli was thought to be freak, uh, tawag sa kanila ay um, market. no? Parang uh, Sangli, pronounced as Sangli, is from Sengdi Shengyi, which is business. No? And then, the Boxer Codex was acquired, very clear copy, in his scan. At nung nakita, kasi may Chinese characters yung Boxer Codex, eh, nalaman nila, no, hindi pala Sangli yun. Hindi siya Sangli or Sengdi Shengyi. No? It was really, the Sangli came from Sanglai or Sangle, uh, Shonglai in Hokkien, or Sengdi or Shengyi, which is basically a frequent visitor. Which is true, no? sabi ni Ma'am Mea si no na ang mga sangli was a frequent visitor during the time ng ating mga ng ating mga ninuno eh tinawag silang sangli no? kami ay mga bisita niyo laging bisita so mas mas it makes also it makes more sense and of course um this you will see the boxer codex no uh, copy and you will see na ayun po yung characters dun sa taas and for the first 200 years of spanish colonization this is true. 90% of the Chinese came from Fujian and the rest came from Canton. So, yung Fujian, uh, which is the, sa, isa sa mga malapit na province sa atin, sa Pilipinas. O kaya marami. Now, what did they do? Aside from uh, market, no, uh, some of them are so talented with printing. Kasi nagpiprint na talaga yung mga Chinese. Eh. So, the Spaniards actually got them to become printers. So, the Chinese printers uh, printed the very first book ever in the Philippines, which was Doctrina Cristiana in Lengua Española y Tagala no? uh, by the Dominicans in 1593. And kasama niyan, hindi masyadong tinuturo, was the second printed material in the Philippines called the Shilu. The Shilu is Doctrina Cristiana and Lengua Sina. Oh? So these two um, publications, you will see in the next slide, they actually have a connected history. And sino pa ang kukuni nilang printer? They will get a guy named Tomas Pinpin. And Tomas Pinpin, we believe, is at Sinoy. Oh? So marunong siyang magprint dahil may tradition na siya ng pagpiprint ng mga Chinese. Now, uh, what would happen? Using these two books, they're going to convert some of the ethnic Chinese to the religion of the Spaniards. And they would be called Sanglai Cristiano. So you will see in the next picture, there's a picture here of the Sanglai Cristiano with the kid, very cute, nagigitara pa. Now, what happened, again, to, con to, to, even, to continue the racial segregation that the Spaniards were doing, uh, hinati pa nila yung mga Sanglai, yung mga Chinese. So they separated from the ethnic Chinese, like Luis Perez das Marinas, the son of Gomez Perez das Marinas, when he became the governor general, created a place on March 28, 1594, to settle those Sangle Cristiano, and that's Binondo. So they put a parish there, which is now, of course, Binondo Church, which is a very beautiful um, uh, painting by Jose Honorato Lozano of the Binondo Church which is also depicted in the Chinatown Museum. You will see the Shilu and the Doctrina Christiana in the next picture. You will see it there displayed with a scale model of the Binondo Church. You will see it in the Binondo Chinatown Museum. Yes. Uh, look, show it. Ah, tinanggal nyo. Okay, tinanggal nyo. So there's a pagoda. Uh, by Jose Honorato Lozano na, na, who is uh, na nandoon din ano, Chinese pagoda and another picture you will see Chinese merchants by Jose Honorato Lozano very beautiful uh, pictures here now I believe this is Damian Domingo the next picture will show you yung tinatawag nating mistiso Chino uh, so uh, this Chinese ganito yan eh I'll tell you something uh, ngayon lang yan eh yung tinatawag na uh, uh, Great Wall 
the Great Wall, di ba? Parang bawal mag mag-asawa ang isang Chinese sa isang Filipino. May mga pamilyang pinagbabawal yon. But that was actually a 20th century phenomenon. Do, during the time of the Spaniards, uh, ano yan, hindi sila maselan. They intermarry with the Spaniards. They inter- At I think the Chinese and the, 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 if I'm not mistaken, okay, the Chinese and the Spaniards, when they intermarry, they were called the Tornatras. Uh, uh, yung mistiso chino kapag ka pinoy yung ano pinoy yung mga kaano nila no so yan nang yan may mistiso china tayo dito and then the indio so pa, naging intermarry din sila nagkakaroon sila ng mga si, ano ng mga supling and here you will see yung sinasabi ko kanina that there's a binondo church uh, uh, in the next slide is it there ah uh, yeah no, yeah yeah, there's a Binondo Church uh, by, I think this is Yauhan Karut, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then another picture in the uh, 19th century, late 19th century. Ayan. Uh, look at the coolie. Yeah, there's a, there's a picture of a coolie. Now, now I understand why it's called the coolie. Kasi nag-usap-usap kami ng mga uh, friends natin sa Chinatown Museum. Eh, hindi ko rin masyadong alam to. Ano ba yung coolie? No, ah uh, kuli pala yan. Yan yung mga nagbubuhat na ikita natin. No? Can you show the next picture? By was by you know. I think it's Lusano also. Yung Calle Rosario in Binondo. Yeah, you will see there's a kuli there. No, ano ba yung kuli na yan? Akala ko dati pansit ang binebenta, no? Yun pala para daw siyang sweet na inumin. Kaya pala kuli. So, kung kuli yan, in Tagalog you call that palamig. So, nagpapalamig. Uh, it's a sweet na parang ang equivalent daw ito na siguro nung mantataho natin ngayon. So yan yun, mga Chinese yan. No? Uh, hindi sila takot gumawa ng mga trabahong maliliit na may maliit na kita sa bawat produkto pero sila yung nag- they get by. Ano? And um, you will see, may teatro pa sila sa Binondo noong mga Spanish period. There's teatro de Binondo there. And you will see this is the uh, Binondo Street during the time of the Spaniards. Now, they all, there's a debate. And, ano ba Chinatown daw of Binondo is the oldest Chinatown. Uh, so, 1500s tayo, di ba? And 14th, 15th century, which means 1400s, pero ng Chinese community sa Cambodia. Huh? Uh, so, ibig sabihin, kung may Chinese community na sila doon, di mas matanda yun kesa doon sa Binondo Chinatown. Although, Although, technically, 2013 lang sila naging Chinatown. So, hindi nila tinatawag yung Chinatown na sarili nila until 2013. Eh, tayo matagal ng Chinatown yung tinatawag natin dyan. Huh? So, uh, but that's a debate. No? It's not so important. Because, because I believe the first Chinatown ever in the world is in China. Wala na dapat away doon. Okay, so, the problem was, the next slide you will see Gomez, uh, sorry, Luis Perez das Marinas uh, painted by Felix Resurrection Hidalgo. You know this guy? He's so un- he's so unlucky. He will die kasi yung father niya si Gomez. Pinatay ng mga sangle yon. Kasi kasi malupit siya sa mga sangle doon sa galyon nila, pinatay nila. So that and then ito, yung anak niya napatay din sa isang laban labanan with the sangle kasi may Chinese rebellion na nangyayari. So with all these kinds of conflict between the Spaniards and the Chinese, nagkaroon ng retaliation yan. So there were times that they massacred men, women, children, 25,000 Chinese. There's one na 30,000 Chinese. So uh, medyo matindi sila dito sa ganitong mga uh, pag... Uh, pag uh, ano, no? pag uh, and then of course you have the attack of Limahong. No? Dahil uh, si Limahong ay isang Chinese and then they are going to suspect na may mga kampi sila dito uh, there was one time that the three mandarins came to Ch- to the Philippines and then after that minasakar nila in Chinese kasi naginala sila na spice yung tatlong mandarin na yon this is a very sad thing na nangyari so paningers din yung mga Kastila because if you're going to see the next picture uh, a lot of their canons are actually pointed at the Chinese enclave so both yung Binondo and also yung tinatawag natin na uh, Parian ay may mga kanyon na nakatutok dyan so just to protect their capital now of course uh, the the non christianized chinese if they were not able to become christian 
they have a separate cemetery also. Kasi yung mga cemeteryo ng katoliko, cemeteryo ng katoliko, para lang sa mga katoliko yun. So, they have segregation talaga yung, talagang issue talaga nila yung race talaga. They, at, at yung religion. Na kapag hindi sumama, kaya nga, sa bawat bayan, ang sinasabi nila, merong cemeteryo ng inchik. So there's a Catholic cemetery which they call Campo Santo, Holy Ground, yung cemetery, then cemetery ng Inchik. So hindi holy para sa kanila yon. So may ganong chorba. No? So this is one picture, an old photograph of a Chinese person, no? siguro around ano to, no? uh, early 20th century. Um, maninirahan sila no? sa iba't ibang lugar. So the Chinese eventually... Aside from Binondo, aside from 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 Pavian, they will live in Tondo. So you will see here the parish of Tondo. Next picture. And they will live in Tondo. They will live in uh, Quiapo. No? Uh, so you see the parish of Quiapo where they are um, processing the Nazareno even in the in the uh, 19th century, which is 1800s and 17th century. And then of course Santa Cruz. You see the Church of Santa Cruz there in the old picture uh, in the next uh, slide. Uh, pero, even if they will live in Tondo, Binondo, uh, what you call this, uh, Quiapo and Santa Cruz, Binondo would still be, you know, the parang center of uh, Chinese, Catholic Chinese, um, shall we say, activity. In which a lot of them were actually able to continue you know, a lot of their activities, no? So, you will see there's, there's, uh, at nakiki, nakiki halubilo no, sa mga Indio, sa mga Kastila. So, you will see there at drawing of an Indio and a Chino, uh, and then, makakuli din yung, ano, or, or, or ang, ang, ang sinuserve niya, no? Uh, and then, of course, you will see another picture here of uh, yung naglelechon. Nakita nyo ba yun, no? Oo, oh, tingnan nyo yung susunod. Yan, naglelechon. Oo, oh, di ba? So, di ba, lechon, kinakain ng mga Chinese. Uh, and then, of course, you have here another picture of yung mga sapatero. So, even the Westerners go to the Chinese uh, for their um, shoe needs. Ano? So, sapatero. And then, yung ano, yung ito, mahirap kasi talaga gawin ito, yung nagtututuli. Oh, so, yung mga ear, ano, yung kumukuha ng earwax. No? And so, yan, makikilala yung, yung, yung Chinatown, yung Binondo, doon sa mga activities na yan. So, there are lots of economic activities you will see in the next slides. And, of course, yung economic activity ngayon, dahil baksakan ng produkto, how do you ship those products to other parts of the country? And what were their means of transportation? So, nasa ilog, no? you will see the Fuente de España, no? Jones Bridge. Um, makikita nyo, noon, ang ginagamit nila, yan. So, may little eskinita dito, susunod na picture. You will see the cascos. No? So, yung casco, yun yung ginagamit nilang uh, pang, uh, pang, ano, pang, tawag dito, pang transport ng goods, pang transport ng tao, no? So, ayan. Other pictures. So, sa Binondo, uh, alam nyo dati, I'll, I'll tell you something. This is, this is quite interesting. Uh, Manila was called the Venice of Asia kasi yung mga Quiapo, Binondo, Santa Cruz, uh, pwede siyang itraverse via this uh, estero system. No? Na pag tinignan mo, nakakatawa ito, makikita mo na kahit sa likod ng bahay ng mga tao na nakatapat sa ilog, meron silang entrances. So kaya nga makikita mo yun, di ba, dun sa, ano, dun sa, dun sa no limit tangere, dun sa, di ba, nakatira sa Binondo si Kapitan Tiago, na pumunta si Ibarra, tapos dumaan siya dun sa likod ng ilog, dun sa likod ng bahay, at dun sila nagsuyuan ni Maria Clara for the very last time. So, yun yung makikita natin. Can I see the next slide? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yun. Yan. So, in the Binondo Chinatown Museum, you will see this. No? Yung representation ng casco, yung mga products ng uh, Chinatown. So, makikita nyo rin yung doon sa museum natin. Okay? So, you have here uh, the Chinese indulging in music. Uh, in music. So, with the Westerners. So, may, may slide ka ba doon? Yan. And then, uh, there's a... There's a, there's a um, exhibit in the Binondo Chinatown Museum where you will see these uh, um, 
representation of Catholicism. No? Kasi nga, kahit Chinese sila, they, they actually, shall we say, embrace the Catholic religion, a lot of them, and actually engaged in, in, in some works na nagpaunlad sa ating church history. So for example, uh, the next picture is not in Binondo. It's actually in Intramuros. It's called San Agustin Church. But in San Agustin Church, they actually left uh, some uh, food dogs which are Chinese good black lions. So you will see in the next picture itong mga food dogs na ito. Uh -huh. Can I see? Yes. And you will also see na uh, may mga images dyan itong mga um, Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary of La Naval. Meron ditong cross ng, if, I'm not sure if this is the cross of Tansa or, or whatever. Pero, uh, these uh, crosses, ano, this is Santo Cristo de, is it? Longos? I forgot. But anyway, um, a, a lot of the images actually, during the time of the Spaniards, were actually ivory images that were made by the Chinese. So if you're going to see one of the statues in the San Agustin Church, itong Immaculate Conception, you will see na this is pure ivory. No, that was made by the Chinese. Kaya makita mo yung mata niya. Uh, Chinese, the end. So, uh, beyond the church, actually, became a hotbed of Sir, so I think you're lagging. Yes. I think oh, am I there's lagging? currently yeah. Wait no up. audio. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Wait a minute. When did the where where when did the problem arise? Okay, so I think you're not. Okay, am I now okay? Subo um, to dog isa, dalawa, tatlo. Hold on. Okay, okay, wait. Yeah. You're very clear to me. Okay, so I okay, think I, I, am I now okay? I, I think the audio is Am I now back. okay? The audio is back. Okay, good, good, so. good. Nagtanggal ako ng ano isa. Okay, sige. Thank you so much. I think I'm I'm clear with the Chinese were actually doing images of saints and all of that. Yeah. Okay. Sige. Um, the beyond the church became the hotbed of deep spirituality, where you will see one of their escribiente was a guy named Lorenzo Ruiz. You are uh, okay, sir. Yes. You are okay, okay, sir. Good. 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 Okay. So you have Lorenzo Ruiz. Uh, is an escribano. He's, he's a secretary. He writes things for the priest. Uh, in beyond the church. And he was Chinoy. He was Chinoy. He was, he, his father was a, a, a Chinese guy and his mother was Filipina. And you know what happened to him, of course. He joined the Dominicans uh, to be martyred in, in propagating the faith in Japan. And Lorenzo Ruiz and his companions was the first beatification ever made outside Rome uh, in Manila in 1981. And he was uh, canonized after that. Uh, also, in Binondo, resided with a, with, again, with a, with a, with a, with a uh, Chinese father and a Filipino mother, uh, a, a woman named Ignacia Yuko. Ignacia Yuko uh, wanted to become part of the nuns of the Jesuits, but of course they were not allowed to be nuns at that time because they were Filipina. They were Filipina and they, she was also Chinese Filipina. So what she did was she she proposed to the church a new congregation where they will accept Indias or yung tinatawag na nating native Filipinas and the Chinese mestizos. And that is when the religiosas de la Virgen Maria also known as the uh, com, uh, the 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 Beaterio de Compañía de Jesús, was uh, um, instituted. So Madre Ignacia del Espíritu Santo was a true valiant Filipina who uh, wanted Pinais, Indias, to be part of the of the Church of the Nuns. Uh, kaya nga bayani itong si Madre Ignacia del Espíritu Santo. And guess what? She she was Chinoy. See. So, ang daming, ang daming contributions ng community na ito sa ating bayan. Now, let's see. On the next slide, you will see that because you have an eclectic mix in Binondo of the Chinese tradition and the Catholic faith, even today, they practice some sort of a syncretic uh, a religion. Father Aristotelde of the Jesuits uh, 
is studying this phenomenon of syncretic Buddhism and Christianity that you still foresee in, in, in Manila. So this is, this is uh, an image that I took at the back of the Binondo Church where you will see that the, they, they are actually using Chinese incense and they're doing the uh, yes, no, maybe of the Taoists and you see there's a cross there. So it's really a uh, 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 folk Kumbaga, folk Buddhism, folk Christianity, uh, in a way, uh, that they mixed it. So it's very colorful, the religious traditions in Binondo. Diba? So another picture, you'll see me there. Yeah, yeah, there it is. So uh, eventually, there would be Chinese elites no? that would uh, rule in Binondo. And uh, and they would be, you know, because there are rich Chinese, there are poor Chinese at that time. You will see that uh, uh, some of them would become what we call the uh, Capitan Sino or the Chinese uh, uh, governor, gobernadorcillo in Binondo. So, uh, Capitan Sino ang tawag nila doon. So, this is a Chinese guy who rules uh, and leads in Binondo. Now, there's one beautiful picture here of streets in Binondo. Uh -huh. Next slide, please. There. Yeah, and then uh, so you will see uh, various uh, uh, activities, and then you will see here in this photo, in these pictures, very very beautiful. Na makikita mo na hindi pala black and white ang mga Pilipino nun. Hindi sila black and white. Makukula yung kanila mga suot. They are they're very full of life and all of that. So, um, yeah. Next picture you will see a what's this? Ah, this is Puente de España. Puente de España was actually a later bridge in the 19th century that was added to ease the traffic no? uh, doon sa ibang mga bridges na ginagamit ng mga uh, Castilla at that time. No? Like, you know, the other bridges. Now, uh, Puente de España uh, eventually became Jones Bridge. Now, they destroyed the old bridge, so Yung Jones Bridge kayon was not really Puente de España. I mean, they there's I think they move it one block. Eh, but but still, this that's that's the old bridge. Na parang that's the attribute that bridge, uh, the beginning of that bridge to 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 the old Puente de España. So it's now Jones Bridge na. At that time, they made and dami niyang magagandang mga design. Now of course they redesigned it. No, uh, today they wanted to get the old feel back, not exactly the old, you know, Manila feel, uh, the old original Jones Bridge, but, you know, just, just to give the old feel. So they put the, the like, the, the Parisian, you know, um, uh, lampposts there, and they, they wanted to bring back what we call the, the four La Madre Filipina statues, which apparently we now know what they meant. Democracy, justice, which is now at the Court of Appeals, uh, hindi pa nila binabalik and we, we, they want it back. Uh, progress, which is La Madre Filipina na nasa Luneta, and gratitude, which was destroyed during the war and now we, we now have a replica. So democracy, justice, progress, and gratitude, the Americans placed those La Madre Filipina doon sa Jones Bridge to tell us that this is the legacy of Representative William Jones. So William Jones gave the law uh, uh, no, no, uh, gave birth to the jo Jones Law, which uh, gave us what we call Philippine independence uh, eventually. So, yun yung, ano, yun yung ano, na democracy, justice, progress, and gratitude is La Madre Filipinas' uh, way of thanking America for their legacies to the Philippines. Lalo na doon sa ginawa ni William Jones. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng Jones Bridge. It's really a reminder of American colonization, which was, of course, part of our history. We cannot change that. Okay, so you will see that in Binondo, there's like a garden at that time. And uh, um, makikita nyo, no, na... Oh, anyway. I'm, it's, it's better to see this hotel here. Yon. There's a Kinulayang Kas Oh, Kinulayang Kasaysayan, no? Remember that they're going to be the next speakers no, of, of this event. And also, we're talking about money kanina and exchange. Uh, 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 the the Halo Halo history steam no, uh, uh, will be part of the webinar as well. And they will talk about cash, Saisayan. 
Okay, but you see here, kinulayang kasaysayan, which is uh, how they color this picture. No, You will see the Hotel de Oriente, which is the most beautiful hotel at that time, which was in Binondo. And you will see here the uh, another, yun, yung mga nagbubuhat, and you will, yung kanilang mga binibenta, and you will see uh, other pictures from the Illustrated London News uh, na makikita ninyo yung ginagawa ng mga Chinese there. Now, there's a picture of Hotel de Oriente. Uh, besides what we call, at dyan nag, dyan nag hotel si Rizal, ano? actually dyan nakuha yung pro propaganda niya na kaya nahuli siya nung at dinala sa dapitan. No? Kaya, ano yung planted yun ng mga Kastila? No? Yung Pobres Priles. Dyan na, dyan sa Hotel de Oriente yun. And then you will see, nakatabi niya yung La Insular Cigar and Cigarette Factory. Uh, itong dalawang ano na ito, itong Hotel de Oriente at saka yung La Insular, they were at what we call the uh, yung plaza near what we call the Binondo Church. So you will see there the Binondo Church as well. So next slide. Ayan. Yo. Okay, sige. Then there's Plaza Cervantes and you know there was banking, there was business in uh, Binondo. Uh, kaya nga nakakatuwa ano na makita to mga old pictures na ito of course near binondo was a uh, place next picture huh? mm -hmm. yan no and then another picture yan which is escolta no? near binondo is what we call escolta it's a, it's a street in manila na makikita natin na uh, eventually because Binondo was the Bagsakan and the Pacquiawan and the center, Central Business District, Escolta became the convenient successor of this. Escolta, during the end of the Spanish era, was like the Makati of the Philippines. It was like the Makati of that time. It was the Central Business District. No? So eventually, no, um, and, and of course, Escolta now is almost forgotten, but you will see that dyan itatayo yung mga magagandang buildings during the time of the Americans because even during the time of the Americans before the war, Escolta was still the shopping district of Manila. Uh, and John Ray Ramos, my friend, uh, from, the, uh, from, from Proyecto, no? next slide please, you will see, you will see him here you know, uh, telling stories about Binondo. And... Uh, you will see in the next slide, ayan, yung mga shops in Binondo during the time of the Spaniards. Next picture. And you will see that Santa Cruz Church, which is the, at the end of Binondo. And today, you will also see there, ayan, the Santa Cruz Church and the new buildings there from the time of the Americans. Uh, and you will see uh, the first Clarks and the first ice cream parlor nandyan po sa Escolta yan. And you will see another view of Escolta no uh, from from the Santa Cruz church you will see the funeral of Magsaysay passing by Escolta very beautiful buildings na parang, you know, and these were saved during the war so it's like the Paris of of the Philippines of Manila no? so what's my point here now before we go to kasi may, may question tayo about famous uh, people from Binondo now let me see look at this and very briefly because uh, I, I only have about 10 minutes left um, look in the next pictures you will see, this is like the Sangle Filipinas. These are labeled, you know, uh, mga Ch uh, Mistisa China and Sangle Filipinas. And then there's another picture, a very beautiful one and very famous from the Jeronimo Berenguer de los Reyes Museum. Um, next slide. Yeah, you will see her. Uh, the, she was also labeled Sangle Filipina. Uh, this is like the mix of history, heritage that Binondo has. No, it's represented by whoever this woman is. Now, she's a Sangli, but she's also a Filipina. And this is the various traditions of very rich heritage na kanilang naisabuhay sa Binondo. Oh, so Binondo is not just Chinese. People are always like thinking Binondo, Chinatown. No, Binondo is really uh, Philippine history in in a, in a, in a capsule so that you have the Chinese influence, the European influence, the Filipino influence, all in that image. So can you go back to that picture of the lady? I, I would like it to be 
the last image for this part that you will see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there. So Shayon, the Sangle Filipina girl from the GBR Museum. She is like the representation in a way of Binondo. She's as Bino she's as Filipino as all the traditions that we have is Filipino. Okay, let's go to famous Binondo people. Famous Binondo people is Balvino. Uh, one of uh, uh, the first one would be Balvino Mauricio. Balvino Mauricio. If you're going to look at the painting before Rizal, huh? yeah, Balvino Mauricio was a very rich illustrado guy. So what happened was the galleon trade stopped by early 1800s because of the Mexican Revolution at nagkaroon ng parang uh, pagbabago sa ekonomiya that the, the, the Spaniards opened the ports and the foreign traders came in. When the foreign traders came in, uh, what they did was they got Indios as part of the economy. So they got Indios as their middlemen. And because of this, nag rise up yung mga ilustrados. Eventually, they will be called ilustrados. They are Indios and Chinese mestizos. A lot of them from Binondo. No? And one of them would be Balbino Mauricio. Now, Jose Honorato Lozano painted this in 1863. Gusto ko lang i-point out sa inyo. 1864, I mean. Look at the painting. Can you go back to the painting? In the middle, you will see uh, the, you will see Binondo. There's, there's uh, Puente de España there, and you will see um, there's the garden again na nakita natin kanina. There's this Balvino Mauricio, Letras y Figuras, Jose Honorato Luzano. So mga rich people, ipinapagawa nila yan. You will see in the middle a drawing or drawings of a house. No, na may courtyard, may staircase, you see the large uh, living room, you have the corridors, and you have the dining room. Okay. 1864. Jose Rizal eventually would remember this house because remember, he was in Manila. Uh, can we go to Jose Rizal? Yeah. He was in Manila. He was a student there. He, he probably knew Balvino Mauricio or his activities. And he remembers Balvino Mauricio because Balvino Mauricio will become the inspiration for Capitan Tiago. Okay, Balvino Mauricio lived in Binondo. And you will see, again, uh, uh, next slide, you will see that this house that was painted by Lozano when Rizal was only three years old is the exact um, picture of how Rizal described Capitan Tiago's house in the first chapter of the No Limit Andre. Oh, and where's that house? It's what in, in what we call Juan Luna Street now, which was Anluage Street. Anluage Street beside the Estero. Oh, and this is Binondo. So Binondo is definitely part of our history. It was Capitan Tiago's house, uh, which was in, uh, um, uh, inspired by a guy named Balvino Mauricio. So you will see here a picture of the La Solidaridad uh, in the next slide. And why? Why is that? Why do you have La Solidaridad there? Because, you know, that, that publication by the propaganda movement actually just, you know, floated around. And you will see in this uh, next slide, you will see um, pictures of people, um, heroes who are actually involved in Binondo. And you will see na, uh, there's a representation here of the various magazines, various um, literature that floated around uh, Binondo at this time. Why? Because Binondo is very near where our nation was actually conceived. Really. No? I, I had a tour where I toured with the, some group of friends from the Bahay Nakpil, Binondo, Tondo, San Nicolas districts. And I realized, yun palang mga pinag-uusapan sa history ng mga events. Walking distance lang pala sila sa isa't isa. How? Okay, next slide you will see Andres Bonifacio and Gregoria de Jesus. And why is that? Gregoria de Jesus, of course we know that Bonifacio came from Tondo, very near Binondo, organizes the Katipunan in, in, in Tondo, no? Ascaraga Street in Tondo, Manila, which is now Recto. Uh, you will also see na itong idililigawan niya, his second wife, was actually Gregoria Desus, 
who is a resident of San Nicolas district, which is near Binondo, or San Nicolas Binondo. Now, they were married in 1893 in Binondo Church. Huh? The union first wedding nila. But they were also married in Babaylan rites of the Katipunan. Now, in the house of Doroteo Ong Hunko in Ilaya Street Tondo, near Binondo, you will have a, uh, what we call, itong tinatawag natin na meeting of the La Liga Filipina in which Rizal uh, Bonifacio became involved and Apolinario Mabini. But Rizal was part of that as well. He, he organized it. But he was arrested and yun lahat ng lugar na yun, no? Ascaraga, Ilaya, these were ano, no? part of where the Katipunan started. Di ba? Uh, next picture, yes, from Adarna. Thank you. So nilakad namin lahat yan. And this is amazing. Uh, these are the group. This is the group that we have no? uh, in the next picture. And uh, there's a house that where we went in La Bezare Street in Binondo. No? Uh, next slide, there. What's that house? It used to be the site of Pio Valenzuela's house in Binondo where they printed, next slide, the Kalayaan, the newspaper of the Katipunan. Uh, and in that area, uh, and uh, the newspapers were printed by a guy named uh, uh, Candido Iben and Francisco del Castillo. They came from Aklan uh, uh, and Panay, and they were Australian. Di they, they were divers from Australia, OFWs, who came to the Philippines and helped in the revolution. So, in that house, next slide, please. Pio Valenzuela, Andres Bonifacio, and Emilio Asinto actually came up with the newspaper. So. Pio Valenzuela published it, and Emilio Asinto uh, was the editor of what we call Kalayaan. Uh, next picture, please. And you will also see Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Bayan. Uh, yan. And Pag-ibig sa Tinubuang Bayan was part of those that they published. And this is the actual manuscript from the Archivo General Militar de Madrid. Okay. We know that the Lunas came from Ilocos. But they actually have a house very, very near Binondo. No? Uh, this is near the Raja Suleiman High uh, School, the birthplace of General Antonio Luna. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so the birthplace of General Antonio Luna. Uh, you will see there. It's, it's, uh, of course, this is what we believe, the itong birthplace na niya. And, of course, Jose Rizal, we go back to Jose Rizal. When he died, uh, next uh, picture, please. Uh, he was executed in the Luneta in 1896. Uh, you will see the next picture, his family. They were already relocated from Calamba. They're now in Binondo. So he was, uh, the mother of Rizal was living in Narcisa's house in Binondo. And today, we don't have the house now, but in Ocean Cell Building. Next slide, please. You will see the markers of what used to be the house of uh, Narcisa and Chodora Alonso. Uh, what's the importance of that house? So uh, these are from the Binondo Heritage, uh, Binondo Muse uh, Chinatown Museum. There's a copy of El Renacimiento and La Patria pertaining to Serizal's death. Uh, and the burial ground in Paco, Manila. No? So next picture, you will see the where Jose Rizal was buried after his execution in the Paco Cemetery. Oh, there's the mother of Rizal and some of their relatives there. In 1896, when they, when, they, when they exhumed the body of Jose Rizal, they placed it in an urn. And that urn was placed in the house of Teodoro Alonso in Binondo. So the mother of Rizal always wanted to show visitors the head, the skull of Jose Rizal after reciting the Mi Ultimo Adios from memory. Very touching mother. And of course, you will see her here, Doña Chudora Alonso, when uh, uh, almost dying, she was in her, at her death chair uh, before she died in Binondo as well. So, when uh, Doña Chudora died, eventually, the Rizal monument would be erected and they had a procession. So next, uh, next slide, you will see a map of Manila, wherein you will see that from, from Binondo, they had the procession to the Ayuntamiento, 
of the urn with the Knights of Rizal and the Masons, and eventually they laid, laid it in Ayuntamiento uh, for one day, and they brought it to where the Jose Rizal Monument is now there uh, in the Luneta. This was in 1912. In 1913, they'll put the monument. Now, we reenacted this as part of the Knights of Rizal. So you will see the original picture. Can we, can we have that photo? So this is one of our ideas for the Knights of Rizal. We went to Binondo early morning of the 100th anniversary of the burial of Rizal, and we had this uh, procession wherein we imitated the old Knights of Rizal when they reburied Jose Rizal in Luneta. So we started our walk in Binondo. Yeah. Next picture, please. Uh, with Gemma Cusaveneta uh, representing the Rizal family in the uh, mock bear in, in the in the symbolic reburial of Jose Rizal. Yeah. And we talk about the Philippine Revolution, which of course Jose Rizal had a lot of to do to inspire. Uh, there's one guy from Habonero Street in Binondo who was a blacksmith. And he was he was Chinese, he was pure-blooded Chinese. And his name is Jose Ignacio Pawa. And you will see his picture, very dashing. And he became part of the generals of the revolution. And Pawa, um, according to Teodoro Goncillo, because you know he was winning battles for the Philippine cause against the Spaniards and the Americans. And he was very loyal to the Republic. And Ignacio Pawa was, according to Teodoro Goncillo, more Filipino than a lot of Filipinos. So that says a lot about this pure-blooded Chinese guy who fought for us. Uh, of course, there's one, there's, there's one thing lang na, na medyo, uh, there's a tarnish in his uh, reputation because he was faithful with uh, Aguinaldo during the time of the conflict with Bonifacio. So he sumaksak sa leeg kay Bonifacio when they arrested him. But, you know, of course, we, we still uh, um, give credit to his contributions to the Philippine Revolution. And then, you know, Ong Pin, right? There's Ong Pin, the, the jewelry uh, place, the jewelry street, right? so Ong Pin. Uh, who is Ong Pin? There's a big joke about this, this monument near the Binondo Church. Na parang there's a Chinoy guy na nakabarong na may sobre, tapos sabi nila, magsusuhol daw siya ng politiko, kaya daw siya may sobre. Uh, that's a very bad joke. I don't like that joke. No, because <laughs> I don't like that joke because the guy represented by this monument and the Ong Pin Street is actually a very, very um, important guy in our history. Not so much talked about the guy's name is uh, Roman Ong Pin. Now, who, who was Roman Ong Pin? Okay, in 1882, he created a store called El Ochentaidos. Next slide, please. You will see the tarjeta of El Ochentaidos, Tindahan ng Pinturas. No? Ni Roman Ong Pin. And uh, Binondo Chinatown Museum gave me a beautiful picture of El Noventaidos, uh, El Ochentaidos there. Beautiful. Uh, um, and who was Roman Ong Pin? No? So, yung El Ochentaidos niya, dun lang naman nagchichikahan yung mga bayani natin. So, the Lunas would go there, they would buy paint, no? si Juan Luna will buy paint there, the art materials, and all of that. Ano? Uh, so it's an art store, a very beautiful art store. Tapos, sino pa yung pupunta doon lagi? Pedro Paterno. So the Luna Brothers, Juan and Antonio, Pedro Paterno, Mariano Limhap, who's, of course, another Chinoy na very beautiful ang kanyang contributions sa ating bansa. And Pascual Poblete, and what, what, they were, what were they doing? He was not just selling art piece, uh, art materials. He was also selling, you know, La Solidaridad and the novels of Rizal and all the other publications. So, uh, Roman Ong Pin is basically a pro-Filipino guy. Now, when his El Ochentaidos burned down, next, uh, slide before that, uh, Roman Ong Pin actually sold, uh, had his ano, yung tag na insurance and gave it to the Republic, Emilio Aguinaldo. So he gave it to Emilio Aguinaldo, yung, yung insurance money nung nasunog yung L82. And he also was part, and you know, he was a fan of Bonifacio. Andres Bonifacio, he said, was the, was the most important Filipino. And he was part, next slide please, of what we call the Union Obrera Democratica. Huh? 
uh, the, the labor union at that time. So he, he was part of it. Isabelo de los Reyes, Romano Pin, and Gregorio Aglipay. Oh, ganun siya katindi. And ito yung nakakatuwa dyan, ano? When the Americans came, kinulong siya. So kinulong na siya mga stick. Kinulong pa siya ng mga Amerikano. Nainis na inis siya, ba't siya kinulong? So sabi niya, kahit minsan, sa buong buhay ko, bebam ko ng kahit di singko pagbebentahan ng mga Amerikano. That was his promise. So dahil sa ginawa nila sa Pilipinas. So he never sold anything to the to an American. And when he died, he said, when I die, please bury me wearing the Barong Tagalog. Oh, napakagaling ng Romanong Pin. He was really patriotic and talagang modelo siya. Now, ang ganda nito kasi, the Binondo Chinatown Museum gave me a picture, beautiful picture of L82 na merong interior ng shop ni Romanong Pin. And you know what's fantastic? After the lockdown, you have to visit the Binondo Chinatown Museum to get a feel of the shop of this great patriot of the Philippines at Sinoy. Huh? Nandun, merong replica ng L82 shop. O di ba? Ang ganda. So, bisitahin natin yan. And then of course, um, the, uh, more, more Sinoy, you have La Tondena, uh, which you know was founded by 1902 by Carlos Palanca Tanchinlay. Uh, Tanchinlay siya, and then he, 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 he took the name Carlos Palanca and, you know, he, he is actually the one being honored in what we call the Palanca Memorial Awards for Literature. That's Tan Chin Lai. And si, si Carlos Palanca Tan Chin Lai, mabuti rin yan sa mga, ano, uh, sa mga Pilipino. In fact, siya yung nagpahiram ng pera para magka-business, si Miguel Malvar. So, yan yung mga, ano niya, yan yung mga kwento ng mga Chinoy noon. Talagang meron silang part na nagbibigay sila sa mga patriots, no? And then you have the China Banking Corporation, of course. Um, Nanandyan din sa Binondo area. Okay. Of course, we now know that uh, when the war came, the Chinese actually sided with the Filipinos, the Chinois. Uh, and the Chinese, the ethnic Chinese, they formed two guerrilla groups. One of them is the pro Chiang Kai-shek group, pro Kuomintang. And the other one is the Wachi 48 Squadron, the Wachi uh, guerrillas. And uh, talagang, if you're going to look at it, the Chinatown Museum gave a very beautiful drawing here of uh, uh, their uh, tribute to the Wachi guerrillas. Na, na nagpapakita na, you know, may contribution ng mga Chinoy sa ating struggle for freedom from, you know, from um, people like Romanong Pin to, to the Wachi guerrilla group and all of that. Uh, and you will see here that Binondo was site of that history, of that contribution, of that meeting of minds, meeting of ideas, of, of, of uh, what shall we say, meeting of hearts of the people. So you will see here, uh, the war, of course, destroyed Binondo because Binondo was burned by the Japanese. So the Americans bombed the south side to shell out the Japanese, but the Japanese burned Binondo, and you will see here the picture of that, that area. No? Now, of course, when we think about meeting of the minds, meeting of culture, togetherness, uh, what better way to celebrate that by, is by food, diba? So, if you're going to look at this picture from John Tewell, uh, he got this from the U.S. Library, uh, there's Binondo Church, and there's that bridge connecting San Nicolas to Binondo. And then you will see that near the bridge, there's a, there's a house that says Pansiteria Macanista de Buen Gusto. Okay? So you will see another picture in another, sli in a another slide. Huh? Pansiteria Macanista de Buen Gusto. So this is good. Parang good food from Macau. Pansit Macau, which is good food. Um, it was cited in, by Jose Rizal in the El Filibusterismo as the meeting place of Filipino students. Huh? Oh? So, binanggit pa yan ni Jose Rizal. Now, you know what's amazing about this building, the Pansiteria Macanisa de Buen Gusto, na famous Pansiteria. Uh, I went there 
kasi nagkayayaan kami ni Ivan Mandi, you know, I dedicate this lecture to Ivan Mandi because we know a lot about in, in from Wars because of Ivan. On the night of the eve of the Chinese New Year, he was able to kidnap me, nagpakidnap naman ako, to Binondo, and he, he made me feel for the first time what Chinese New Year was like in Binondo itself. And... Uh, uh, yeah, that's Ivan, and we're in front of the Binondo Church. Please go back to the picture, uh, the last one. You will see the Binondo Church. We're actually stepping on the bridge that was in the picture. And the old black house on your left is actually that building, Panciteria Macanista de Buen Gusto. That is the old building. It's still there, but it's dilapidating, and you know, hopefully we can do something about that. Now, what Ivan did was he showed me some, uh, uh, he showed me, you know, this Ong Pin Street, what was Ong Pin Street like, and it was so festive. Can we look at the next pictures, please? Uh -huh. So, I see the, you know, Filipinos, Chinese, um, foreigners, they're all there to celebrate. Next picture, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yes, beautiful. Sige pa. And, uh, you know, we went there also to eat. You know, we went there to experience the food on a Chinese New Year. Uh, do you have the picture with Ivan and the friends? Yeah. So, he, Ivan and, and, and Anson and, and all the others, you know, we, we were eating and that was great stuff there. Um, yeah, na yun, beautiful. See? Uh, and Ferdinand, yeah. Now, um, when we talk about that, so something togetherness, food ideas, you know, we were we. Uh, what better way to you know when you think of Binondo, you think of you know food, you think of kaginhawaan, and uh, you show these people with on gowns and balong tagalogs. Yeah, this was uh, uh what's the date? June thirty of 2010. Okay, June 30th, 2010, uh, we're actually in the Quirino Grandstand. We watched the uh, inauguration of then President Benigno Aquino III in 2010. Can we go to that slide? Mm -hmm. With my friends from uh, uh, with my friends from UP. Mm -hmm. Do we have those? The one in the grandstand. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in the picture, we're with the uh, the wife of the former prime minister of Malaysia, si Wan Asisa Ismail, the wife of Anwar Ibrahim. Um, after the inauguration, we said, "Okay, um, we're hungry. Of course, we want, we need to eat. Where are you going to eat?" And of course, sabi namin, "What's the uh, area here in?" Luneta in the center of the Philippines, the center of Manila, which is very near where you have great food, not cheap, but something that would satisfy our hearts and our bellies. Of course, Binondo. So we went to Binondo to eat and uh, we were there and mga kaming mga ano no, nakagaon kami lahat or pumunta kami sa Binondo and we went to that uh, store to, to eat. And uh, Yun yung, yun yung nakaalala natin. Na, na, when we go to Binondo, we look for goods, murang-mura, nasisihan yung puso mo. Uh, yun yung ating experience lagi sa Binondo. So, now you see, uh, so we go to this series of pictures. Um, when you look back at the history from the ethnic Chinese, no? Um, Next, yeah, from the ethnic Chinese to what would eventually become the mestizos. Next slide, please. Uh, all of that, diba? the hardships, the, you know, the common struggles, yung common racial experiences with the Spaniards, with what, what the, the colonizers did to us, with the Sinois, the Chinese, and the Filipinos, the Indios, and what eventually we would become the Tsinois, because I'm also part of that community, because of the industry, industriousness of our ancestors. Diba? Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Mm -hmm.
-hmm. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, you will see na, you know, this is what we have all become. We are here, we are Chinois, we are Filipinos in Binondo, we're a nation, uh, usa pra, uh, na product tayo ng lahat ng experiences na yon, ng ating kasaysayan, no? ng pangaapi, ng paghihirap, ng saya, and uh, that is what also Binondo represents. Our shared past, our shared experiences as a people. That's why if you look at this presentation, you will see that Binondo was not just Chinese. Binondo was not just Chinoy. Binondo is actually uh, the microcosm. The story of Binondo is a microcosm of every, uh, the story of every town, of every city in the Philippines. This is our story. Binondo's story is our story. So when we go back to Binondo after the lockdown, when we visit the Chinatown Museum, in Binondo, when you go back to the history of our ancestors there, you will see a part of yourself in that story. You will see yourself in that story. And you will also remember um, your joys, no, your, your happiness when you visited uh, Binondo. Binondo is our shared past, our shared experience, and the place that we can all share. Okay, thank you for that talk, Sir Xiao. I'm sure wow, a lot wow. of wow. Uh, we have a lot of comments. I'm sure there's a lot to discuss. A lot of people um, learned a lot of things. Um, so for those who just came on, uh, thank you for supporting Sir Xiao's talk, and thank you, Sir Xiao, for. Um, coming on. So if you learned anything from Sir Shell's talk, hashtag history matters. I hope when all this lockdown is yes. over, Sir Shell can come visit our museum and you guys can also come visit our museum to know more about Binondo because, you know, Binondo often think, when people think of Binondo, it's often just, you know, the food or the Chinese New Year, but it's really like so much right. more than that. Yeah. <laughs> right, and it's so much right. bigger than the Binondo uh, now, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I'm excited ako eh, when I was seeing the pictures and how you represented that history. That was yeah. really well curated and fantastic. And, and I congratulate you for this effort that you did. Uh, I hope there will be more museums like this. And, and yeah, let's, let's see each other when the lockdown ends. <laughs> yeah. So you can follow Sir Xiao on his following social media that we've plastered onto the screen. So you can find him anywhere and everywhere. Right. His Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. He even has his own website. Or you can, you know, just approach him on the comment sections. So, um, yeah, yeah. So just to credit our and image those sources. Will not be read. Oh, yeah, image sources, yeah. And just for those who, 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 whose questions would not be read, I'm, I will go back and answer them in the inbox, uh, in, in, the, in the comment box the comment section. after this talk. Yes. Okay. For those, okay, so the live is lagging a bit. For those who are asking for a red, uh, certificate of attendance, we posted the link on the comment section. We will do it again. We will also post it on our page so in case you would want a certificate. Um, we do have one, but just please um, either find it on the comments or um, ask it from us from the direct message. So, um, ayan. Thank you, Sir Shao. Oh, I would like to just on. answer this go, go, go. a bit. Ano? Yeah, thank you. Uh, go ahead, Sir yeah. Shao. What, was the, what were you going to answer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, there's one comment here from Maria Cecilia at Yenza yeah, ear candling. They call it ear candling. The one that where they, they get the tutuli. <laughs> Thank you at Miss Atienza. Salamat. Okay, so yeah. um, after Sir Shao's live stream, we still have some three more live streams actually for the month of June. Um, for next Saturday, mm -hmm. it's Cuento, yeah. Kulay at Cultura with NC... 
Ed si son of Kinalang Kasaysayan and Cedric Fajardo. So, um, if you've seen some of the images that Sir Xiao uses, na, you know, it looks like it could have been black and white, mm. but it's colored. Some of those are the works of Ed si son. And then after that, we will talk more about money, which is also a topic that Sir Xiao touched upon. Um, on the earlier part of his presentation, we will be having it with Halo Halo Histories and with the authors of Halo Halo Histories. This will be very kid friendly, so stay tuned for that. And lastly, we will be having uh, What's Inside Chinatown Museum. So, Sir Shao kind of already gave us a sneak peek of what's inside the museum, but we'll be having another sneak peek um, for our last live stream on June. This will also be very kid friendly. So, uh, thank you, Sir Shao, once again for coming on to our show. And yeah. Yeah, do you have any last words to close us out? Well, uh, thank you, Ivan. Ano? Yeah, uh, Ivan was uh, commenting on some of the things that I said, and I, I appreciate that you watched it. I'm so honored. Uh, salamat po. And yeah, uh, I will get back to some. And noted po, uh, there are some uh, comments that, uh, and they're really giving me new learnings yeah. as well. Kaya nga yeah. bin ginawa ko tong aking talk ngayon. This is to really learn a lot from 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 all of you as well and because you know you cannot really learn if, if, if you'll just keep these things for yourself and thank you all for for listening uh and for for watching the presentation uh, i will note all of your comments thank you so much and sofia salvador thank you then for 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 watching okay so um yeah we'll, we will leave our live stream here and um thank you all for watching and we'll be going off in a bit